Coming up, a big announcement from a Big Ten All-American, and the way you watch your Big Ten games could be changing at some point in the future. We're going to get to all of that here on Locked On Big Ten. <laughs> You are Locked On Big Ten, your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for tuning in to Locked On Big Ten. I'm your host, Nate Dickinson, and you're listening to everything you need to know about the conference every day of the week, Monday through Friday. Coming up on the show today, the Big Ten has kind of renewed some media rights with Fox. We're going to get into the details of that. We had talked before on the show about how rights were going to end soon and negotiations were going to happen. It it turns out not all, at least, of what was on the table before is still on the table. We'll get to that later on. But first, before we do any of that, we have to get to the biggest news of the day. Kofi Coburn, Illinois All-American on the court for the Fighting Illini, tweeted out earlier today that he's going to be making his announcement as to something tomorrow. It was vague, just that an announcement's coming tomorrow. Obviously going to be something we think with his basketball future at least, but what could this be and what could it mean for Illinois? Well, we've talked before about how Illinois' projection for the next season really, really does hinge on Kofi Coburn coming back. He, it's Been in a few different places. Illinois has been placed in preseason top 25s in the way too early projections. But that's all been contingent on Illinois getting its All-American big man back in the fold in Champaign. So what does Coburn provide? Obviously stability. In a way that these Big Ten big men have, especially lately, Hunter Dickinson, Luca Garza, a guy like Kofi Coburn, is able to, if you bring him into your team and keep him there for another year, you guarantee scoring, rebounding, and a foundation for less experienced guard play outside to learn from and honestly be able to cover up mistakes with. He's a consistent player, a consistent scorer, and an incredibly, incredibly talented college basketball player. We already know all that stuff. We've seen everything he can do at Illinois which is part of the reason why you might want to go pro right now. And we've talked about this before, too. There are players who have maybe a lot to gain by coming back to the Big Ten in the fall. There are also players who we think really have shown everything that they can be, at least at the college level. And Kofi Coburn's definitely one of those guys. I mean, he averaged 21 points and 11 rebounds last season for Illinois. Those numbers aren't going to get all that much higher. His role for the Illini is not going to get any bigger. So... As far as improving himself, already proven. He's a first-team All-American. But there's reason why I think he will be coming back and will be announcing this here tomorrow. First off, the pro prospects for Coburn really aren't going to change. He's a guy who's a fringe draft pick, if that. He's someone who, to be quite honest, his game, for his size especially, is just not suitable for today's NBA. He's someone who's an incredible college basketball player, but when you put him up against the biggest and strongest out of everyone who's ever been in college basketball in the last 20 years in the pros, things start to change a little bit. That doesn't change from this year to next. It's not something like where we talked about with, say, Trace Jackson Davis. He came back, had another outstanding year, but now he's just kind of a year older and looking at the draft process again as the same kind of prospect. Coburn doesn't have that kind of concern. It's not that that's holding him back or maybe pushing him to the pros, the idea that another year could only hurt. He kind of is what he is as a pro prospect. He knows that by now. On another note, He's now at least decided to make this some sort of an announcement, right? And when you're just thinking about that side of things, it doesn't seem fitting that he would make this kind of a big announcement to announce that he's leaving Illinois as much, just because I feel like that's something that would be more fitting to what we've seen before, people sending out tweets, notes, apps, whatever it is. If you're making the announcement, it's usually an announcement that makes people happy, and uh, 
whether justified or not, people get unhappy when their players are leaving their schools to go pro, especially if they think they could help a whole lot next season like Hope Burma obviously would. But as far as just what he's planning here now, I don't see him saying that I'm leaving with making this now a big thing, not a big thing, uh, whatever a thing is, by him saying he's going to make the announcement. I don't see him saying that it's going to be some sort of big announcement just to announce that he's going to test the waters. So I think we'll know either way, whatever happens here on Wednesday. But if I had to guess, I'd say he's going to tell us that he's going to be coming back for another year at Illinois for a chance to potentially go win a title. Because, to be honest, that's the one thing that maybe could help his draft stock, team success. Being able to put it on a national stage and being able to show off a skill set that maybe not everyone's familiar with quite yet. Or not as familiar with as people who watch the Illini every day know. But we're going to find out tomorrow. He told us that earlier today, tweeted it out from his account. There will be some sort of announcement coming tomorrow. We're assuming regarding Kofi Coburn next step in basketball. And uh, obviously we'll have time to talk about it here on Locked On Big Ten. Coming up in a minute here on the show, we're going to get into the Big Ten's media rights deals. It's complicated and always has been, but it looked like before that the Big Ten's rights were going to be up for grabs here soon. Now it's seeming like not exactly all of that is true. We'll get into it here on Locked On Big Ten. It's one of the most important times of the sports calendar. Basketball playoffs are in full swing. Hockey playoff runs are coming up soon. Baseball is back in season as well. All sorts of different things to put your money on, and you can put it all in one place at Bet Online. Your place to go for all of your sports gambling needs, for all the lines, bets, and anything else that you can put together, parlays, stuff like that. Head on over to Bet Online and get your money in the right spot while getting the information that you need to to make sure it's going in the right places. Bet Online is where the game starts. One place, a one stop shop. For all of your sports betting needs. Back in on Locked On Big Ten, we're talking some weird stuff. The way you watch games, Big Ten games, could be changing at some point soon. It's, at least we found out recently though, not going to change a huge, huge amount, it looks like, at least for the foreseeable future. We had talked about this once on the show before, how the Big Ten's meteorites were coming to an end, their deal with Fox and ESPN at the end of the 2022 and 23 school year. So that means that Big Ten rights were gonna be up for grabs. Big Ten media rights are right now still the biggest in the country. It's projected that the SEC will soon pass the Big Ten, but at least how it stands right now, the Big Ten gets the most money out of media companies for their rights deals when they make them. Now, that means this was huge, obviously this deal coming up at the end of what would be next school year. Instead, what we found out over the weekend was that Fox has at least renewed its part of the deal with the Big Ten. The deal had been before. Fox gets half of the Big Ten games. ESPN gets half of the Big Ten games. Big Ten gets some games brought out as well. Fox is a big time stakeholder in Big Ten Network. So it was split up that way. Fox gets first pick of game every single year. It, it, I'll get to that in a minute. That part of things, Fox is 50%, and the priority in game choice is apparently already decided again. That will be renewed. Another thing we know is that the Big Ten is going to bring in Fox representatives. Again, now already having part of a deal done and having a big stake in Big Ten Network, they're going to bring in Fox people to help negotiate the deals with other networks too. So while ESPN will still likely be a big player in this side, there are also a bunch of new players that are in since the last time these deals were made. We're talking Amazon, Apple, streaming services, things like that. People who are going to be able to hike up prices quite a bit just to get a piece, a piece of the Big Ten sports schedule. So what we know right now is that at least half of the Big Ten games are still going to be on Fox. Fox is still going to get the first pick out of games every single year. What does that mean exactly? Well, pretty much every year they come together and have a games draft in a way. And Fox has always gotten first pick priority. And they've always used the first pick on the Michigan-Ohio State football game. That's not going to change. So at least for now, we still know that game's going to remain on Fox for the foreseeable future. But... 
it's going to become interesting here when the bidding for that other half of the rights comes up what exactly happens and where things start to go again i'm thinking espn still is going to be a big big player i don't think anything goes hugely anywhere but if things do start to split up when the bidding gets high it could be an idea of you as a fan having to go to place a b c if things don't go solely to a couple of different in this case networks or cable stations in espn and fox so could it be getting more complicated yes do we know yet no and it's at least right now though a little bit more stable the situation coming fox is going to still be holding a lot of big 10 sports going at coming up we'll wrap things up here on the show get you anything you may have missed in big 10 news a whole lot going around around the big 10 and with former big 10 players too we'll get to that in just a minute here on locked on big 10 Welcome back into Locked On Big Ten. We're wrapping things up here today with everything we missed and things you may have missed over the last day in Big Ten news. Starting with Butler basketball. Thad Mata, former Ohio State coach, is the new head coach of the Bulldogs in the middle of Indiana. And he's bringing a couple of former Ohio State Buckeyes along with him to the staff. Uh, Names that Ohio State fans know and likely love. Greg Oden and John Diebler hired as assistants onto the staff with Thad Mata. So the Butler Bulldogs, I'm sure, are going to get a whole bunch of new fans, at least on the secondary side, alongside with Buckeyes fans as well. In other news, Ohio State women's golf, basketball, and fencing. This was some interesting news coming out. Has been put on probation for four years by the NCAA for violations that were, in a statement released, quote, over the course of several years. Now, the violations come in addition to already pre-put on self-imposed sanctions by the school itself. It had already imposed postseason bans for all three of those programs in 2020 and 2021, as well as scholarship reductions in the fencing program as well. A fencing program got the biggest hit from the NCAA too. The Ohio State just school got fined $5,000. Fencing budget was cut by 3% the basketball budget by 1% and golf budget by 1% as well. So some interesting stuff coming out over violations with impermissible benefits and activity hours violations as well there at Ohio State that is, again, just kind of interesting. Doesn't seem anything hugely, hugely major based on the gravity of just the sanctions themselves. But again, of course, the specifics of that stuff don't always come out right away. Uh, In other news, Big Ten basketball transfer portal news. One of the top transfer portal targets in the portal right now is on campus at Ohio State, Nigel Pack, one of the biggest guard transfers in all of basketball. We're going to talk about him more here, of course, if he chooses Ohio State. But as we get into a whole bunch of transfer portal stuff, of course, we'll talk more about him and what's going on with his recruitment at Ohio State. Going to have to get Jay Stevens in on it as well. Other Ohio State news. One person potentially coming into the Buckeyes, one is heading out. Corner Seven Banks from Ohio State, a name you probably know if you watch the Buckeyes football team. He is in the transfer portal and has made a decision. He's headed to LSU to join Brian Kelly and the Tigers. Big pickup for them as Coach Kelly tries to get something going there where Coach O had to be left behind. Uh, Michigan alumnus Jordan Poole. In the NBA, had a big night yesterday. It's had a big playoffs. First two playoffs games, 59 points. Those are the first two ever playoff games for the Michigan alumnus. Ten made three-pointers in those two playoff games is the most ever by a player in his first two playoff games, repping the Big Ten well. That's a look at everything going on in the Big Ten here today. We'll, of course, have more with you tomorrow on Locked On Big Ten on everything going on in the conference A whole bunch of more off-season basketball stuff to get to. Transfer portal we need to get through as well. There's a lot for us to talk about. It's coming up right here all week on Locked on Big Ten.